Hi guys, uh, Scott and Holly here. We're down at the 2016 Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. This place is huge, Caroline. Caroline. Join us as we search for our new catamaran for our next adventure. true South Florida fashion, along came the rain, and it rained. But as they say, if you don't like the weather in Florida, wait 15 minutes, it'll change. to give a special thank you to the folks over at Riva and Pershing. Even though they knew we weren't buying, they still let us come play. Thanks guys.
So after the ferry debacle, we finally made it over to the blowboats. There weren't that many there, but we were determined to catch every one that we could that was there. The first boat was the Leopard 45 here. Really nice boat, seemed nicely made. Um, I just think the 45 for charter is going to be a little small for what um, for what we're thinking. The bathrooms seemed a little small. The beds were typical queen tapers. Pretty good size cabins, but for charter I think you need a little bit more. The galley, I don't think you could cook for six or even eight. But that's kind of what we expected out of a 45. This is more of a couple's boat bringing maybe one other couple on board with you to hang out uh, as this is an owner's version, a three bedroom owner's version. The aft settee seemed to have quite a bit of room for uh, dinner, but our favorite thing was this front porch. It's one of the uh, Robertson and Cain trademarks. So far, they're the only ones we've seen with the walk-through salon to the front porch. Really, really do like that. The mid cockpit was kind of interesting because someone could be sunbathing up above you and you could talk to them, and, or you could, I guess, bend down and talk to anyone in the aft settee. Just not quite what I was looking for. And then came the Lagoon 560. This is also where we met Michael, our uh, broker that we're going to work with on the purchase of our new yacht. It has a fairly large rear settee with the mother-in-law quarters there to your left. A big galley. And really big inner settee. I mean, you know, sitting area. Moving down the port hall. We've got the owner's cabin here that has a separate shower and head. The cabins on the Lagoon 56 
are definitely much more charterable. This is this is what we're looking for in the charter vessel. This particular model had quite a few refrigerators and freezers, one up, one down for each. Also had a trash compactor, which was kind of nice. Going over to the other, the port hull, you've got another uh, bow stateroom, and then the aft stateroom on the port side, which is this one, is the mother-in-law's quarters, which has separate access from the rear settee, which is kind of interesting. I like the flush hatches on the decks, that way you're not tripping over anything. You have a pretty nice sunbathing area up front, but my favorite is the flybridge. This is what I'm really looking for in a yacht. There's plenty of room upstairs for everybody to hang out. I think this is be where most people are going to be congregating while the ship's underway. The centrally located helm kind of has your mast in the way, but I don't think it's an issue. All in all, the Lagoon 560 had to be our favorite at the show. So we're walking back after looking at a couple more boats. Uh, there was only about five total there. And these fellas on a Hinkley offered us a lift. You could say no. You don't care where you're going as long as you're on this thing. Right. And be some water taxi for sure. There was nothing spared in the attention to detail on this vessel. She was about a 31, 32 foot power yacht. You could bring 10 of your best friends on board. It looked like it had a little uh, cutty cabin down below with a head and shower. But it was one of the nicest rides back to the main show. Sure beats that water taxi. So upon landing, we come up on Party Girl at $490,000 a week. Holly was really impressed with it, but not so happy after I told her I think it's a bit out of it. As a drone aficionado, I got to see the Mavic fly for the first time. I'm not sure how this guy got his hands on one, but... Nevertheless, I can see why he was filming. All in all, I'd say the show was a great success. We got to see some really beautiful sights and enjoyed seeing how the other half lives. Join us next week though, as we go take a little closer look at that Lagoon 560 with Mike. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya.